Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Florida Panthers franchise here on NHL 20. Don't forget to drop a like on this video. Subscribe if you are new to the channel and want to see more franchise content all day every day here on Franchise Gaming. As you can see, a trade made here by the San Jose Sharks, picking up a center for a couple of draft picks. Can't wait to show you guys the four games in this episode. Let's get into it. Okay, here we go. First game of the episode. Florida the Panthers at home at the BB&T Center in Florida. Taking on the Boston Bruins, a divisional matchup here. We are 15-15-1 going into this game. Bruins, way better than us. They have 20 wins. Tuka Rask has all of them, and we have to go up against him. Sergei Bobrovsky, 10-12-1 on the season with the 271 goals against average. And look at this, Connolly getting away, but he is not going to be able to get the shot in the net. Later on, though, Bruins coming down. They can't get it. And then we're getting a steal here, and then they're going to get it back. And Marshawn going to take a shot, no good, but look at Patrice Bergeron. Getting the rebound and the goal for the Boston's Bruins here. Patrice Bergeron with his ninth goal of the season. Going to start Boston off the right way. Not what we want to see for our guys as it goes right through Bobrovsky's five hole. Come on, Bob. You got to do better than that. So here's another pass, and that one going to get stopped by Bobrovsky as he stepped up his game a little bit here. Now there's a slapper, and Tuka Rask going to handle that one. We get a little bit of a step there, but that one's also going to be handled by Tuka Rask. Here's Ekblad, and Ekblad going to slap one and go into the net for our goal. First goal of the game for Florida. Look at Ekblad with that slapper. Did that come off of the captain there? I don't know. They're going to call it off. They're going to say goalie interference here. Something like that. They're saying that there was some sort of interference here. I don't understand really because we're not in the crease or anything. But we get a goal waved off. If you understand why, let me know. But there's Vetrano, and he will get our first goal of the game and the episode here. Way to go for Frankie Vetrano. That'll be his fifth goal of the season. It was on the power play. Love to see it. Love to see it. Don't want to see the other team getting penalty kills. So we loving it. We loving it. So it's a 1-1 game now as there he comes out of the box and now Vetrano again is going to miss but look at this that's going to get put in and that's immediately going to get waved off no good that was would have been another Vetrano goal right there as he gets his own rebound and put it in but as you can see his left skate is in the crease that time so that one definitely rightfully waved off here as we take one more look there, there you go. Left foot in the crease. They're not going to give it to him. So, remains a 1-1 game. There's a miss. Tuka Rask making some nice saves deeper into this game. Bobrovsky going to get it, and he's going to try and push it out. And Bergeron going to get the easy goal as Bobrovsky trying to scramble back to the net there. Wasn't a great decision by him to try and pass that one out. Bergeron getting the goal, and it's a 2-1 Boston Bruin lead until this happens. Colton Skivior, I believe I'm saying this name right, but he will tie the game and get it even with his eighth goal of the season and a power play goal for the Florida Panthers. Gotta love seeing that, and that will even us up at two. Colton Skivior being our savior right now as Joe Thornton coming out of the penalty box. Here we go, 2-2 two -two game, and that's a goal in the second, late second period, and that's going to give the Boston Bruins the lead right back. David Pasternak on his 11th goal of the year, the only Boston Bruin fan getting up there and trying to rile up the crowd of the other four Boston Bruin fans that are probably in the building. Anyway, here we go, as into the third period off the pad of Tuka Rast. That's going to go in, and that is Daddy with a goal. Dadanov, Evgeny Dadanov 
with his 10th goal of the year, is going to knot this thing right back up, barely getting that one off of Rask's pad into the net. So we have a 3-3 game with just over nine minutes to play, now under nine minutes, and there's Bacchus, and that goes over the top, no good. And here is Ekblad trying to get it out, and he will lose it to Richie, who passes it over, and then he gets it back and puts it in the net with 8.06 to go. And the Boston Bruins take the 4-3 lead. Brett Richie, only his second goal of the year. That would prove to be the game winner for Boston, so... Heartbreaking loss. It was a back-and-forth game the entire way. Patrice Bergeron, the number one star with two goals, one assist. Daddy and Colton getting in as the second and third stars. So as you can see, we lose this 1-4-3. Daddy had a nice game. 35 shots for us. 44 face-off wins for the Boston Bruins. And that played a big part in their win today. So now we're 17-16-1, and, and we are on the road in Carolina to take on the Hurricanes. Peter Mrazek is in net 14-12-1 with a 284 goals against average and a 908 save percentage. Bobrovsky, better on goals against average, better on save percentage, but a worse record. And we'll see if we can improve upon that as right away it's going to be a goal almost immediately in this game. And that's going to start us off on the right foot. Daddy getting it done again. 11th goal of the year for Evgeny Dadanov. Take another look at it. Just a beautiful wrister to the left side of Mrazic. And that's going to get right by. So here later on, again, early on in the game. And another goal coming for Florida. That is going to make it 2 nothing. not even five minutes into this game. Barkov going to get his 12th goal of the year. The captain getting it done right here with the tip-in. And we're looking good early on until this happens. That was just an odd pinball-like type goal. Would love to take another look at that. That was Sebastian Acho on the goal. And there it is. Just looks very strange. Super quick. No way that Bobrovsky could look at that one and, and get a hold of it. But there's a goal for us. Top right of the net. A beautiful wrister. And that's going to go in for Mike Hoffman. And that'll be his eighth goal of the year. And it is a power play goal. Carolina Hurricanes fans not loving it. But I don't really care what they like. Because we need the goals. And we need the wins. So beautiful shot right there for Hoffman. He's one of the guys you're going to take a look at at the end of the episode. He wants a contract extension. But there's a shot by Carolina. And that's going to knot things up here. Look at the mascot doing the... I don't know what the hell he's doing, to be honest with you. But Ajo, again, that'll be his second goal of tonight. And again, that's going to have us knotted up. Or no, it's 3-2 to two now. My bad. So 3-2. to two. Carolina still needs a goal to get into this one, but look at the stops by Bravrovsky. It's not going to happen, and we're going to win this one. Aho will be the number one star of the game. Somehow Slavin will be the number two star. Huberto, the number three star. So none of our goal scorers of our three goals make it on the stars list, which makes about zero sense to me. 27 face-offs in favor of Carolina there, and we will go back home now to face another division rival in the Detroit Red Wings. They're another rebuilding type of team just like us. Now Bobrovsky's got his record to above 500. That's what we like to see. So is Jimmy Howard. He's 12-11-2. So we'll see what we can do against Jimmy Howard today. Here is DeRose. That's going to be a quick pass and wide open for the shot and the goal right there for Detroit to take a 1-0 lead. Christopher N. going to get the goal here. Here's Colton Skivior. He's coming up, and he's going to shoot, and that is going to go wide left. But Barkov going to take a handle of it. Going to make a quick turn. Going to shoot a backhander, and Skivior is there for the rebound and the goal to knot this game up. Colton Skivior with his 10th goal of the year. 
And another power play goal here this episode for the Florida Panthers, rocking those uh, classic jerseys, as classic as you can really get, really early 2000s. And Mantha will come out of the penalty box, and it's a 1-1 game even going into the third period, and Rasmussen is going to get the goal right there in front to give Detroit their lead back. Somebody let that man know he has an octopus on his head. But it will be Rasmussen and Vetrano coming out of the box after that power play goal on the other side. So now it's a 2-1 game. Florida with a little bit of a deficit. There's a beautiful slapper, and that's going to go in. Jonathan Huberdo with a beautiful goal right there. I quite like our mascot more than most mascots in the NHL. I'm not going to lie. But we get the, another power play goal as their player coming out of the box. Huberdo with a beautiful shot. Top right shelf. And now very little time remaining. Just these teams really trying to scramble, see if they can get a last-second goal. And it's going to be picked up here by Detroit. It's Larkin. He's going to pass it over to Mantha. He's going to miss, but Larkin's going to put it in with four seconds to play. And the Detroit Red Wings are going to win it dramatically here on the road in Florida with a beautiful rebound goal. By Larkin, their star. And he has done it. Let's take another couple of looks at this one. Just beating out Bobrovsky to the blocker. Look at that. Bobrovsky just trying to close up, but just not quick enough on the reflexes. And Larkin, first star, and he deserves it. Mantha will be the second star with two assists. And Jimmy Howard will be the third star. So all three stars of the Red Wings, 3-2, 35 shots to 25, Detroit had the edge there, and 28 face-offs to 10. We actually didn't do that horribly on face-offs in that one. Now we go to Columbus, Ohio in the nationwide arena. We are 19-18-1. The Blue Jackets are 18-16-5. Let's see what ends up happening in this one. Bobrovsky, look at that, a perfect 500 at 14-14-1. And we are going to go up against Vieni Vevilanen, I guess. That's the best I have. I'm sorry. All right, so 4.08 to go, and there is going to be the quick pass, quick goal. And Columbus going to take that early 1-0 lead. Pierre-Luc Dubois going to get his 12th goal of the season. So now Borgstrom has it for Florida. He's going to slap one. It's not going to make it, but Daddy comes in with a rebound to tie this game up at one. Got to love the shot there from Evgeny Dadanov, and he's really picked up the pace in goals with this episode as he has scored in, I think, every episode or every game of this episode. So here's the pass. There's Wierenski. He's going to get it, but it's going to get taken away, and Matheson has it. Matheson coming up with it. He's going to shoot, and it's coming off the pad, and it's going to be poked in. I don't know exactly who they're going to give this goal to. It doesn't come up on screen, but Matheson, they could give it to Daddy. He was right there. I don't know who they're going to give it to, to be honest with you. It looked like Daddy might have gotten to it, but I don't know. So we might have to check the ending box score for that. There's a shot, and Columbus going to tie it up late second period with a huge slapping one-timer from Devontae Smith-Pelly. Got to love that name. So the game now even at two with just over five minutes to go. There's a missed shot. Now just over four minutes and a missed ride right by the Panthers. Here's Daddy, and he's going to miss one high. Here's another chance, and Pissick's going to miss one too. And here's Columbus in overtime now, and Bob making a nice save. Here we go with Columbus again, just over a minute and a half. They're going to miss just over a minute now for Florida, and that was near a goal, but that's not going to go in either. Now just a couple seconds, and... Trying to get that pass in front. It's not going to happen. So Barkov will be the first to go in the shootout. And he's going to miss it barely. Nice save, actually, there. Here's a good save by Bobrovsky. 
Now here's Huberto, and he can't get it to go. So now Nyquist coming down on Bobrovsky. He's going to miss it. So now, here we go. Here's another chance for us, and we are going to miss right there. Good save. Here's Ren or Wenberg, and he's going to miss as well. Wow. So now we're going into that extra shootout period here. Dubois coming down, and he's going to definitely miss. He's going to get flipped over. So here we go. Here's a shot. Slapper, no good. Tried the slapper there. Here's a shot, and Bobrovsky with the save. So now Ekblad is going to get his chance. The defenseman's going to score on the shootout. Unbelievable goal. Beats the glove. And now Fogliano trying to extend the game. He does not. And the Panthers will win in a shootout here. And the score will be 3-2 to two as Bobrovsky, the number one star. Smith Pelly, number two. Dubois, number three. That's very biased because I think Daddy really should have been in there. But Michael Matheson does get credit for that goal from before. So there's the answer on that one. 23-2. to two was the face-offs today. So now there's two guys I want you to look at before we end this episode of Guinea Dadanov. Now, obviously, Daddy, I love calling him Daddy in this series as a nice little uh, inside jokey joke. 12 goals, 17 assists. He's got 29 points. He happens to lead our team through 39 games. Definitely a guy we might want to bring back, but look at what he's asking. $8 million for eight years. That's a lot for a 30-year-old. So we look at Mike Hoffman. He only has eight goals, nine assists. That's only 17 points. He's not really contributing like an 85 overall should. And he also wants $8 million for eight years. So, guys, what should I do with these guys? Should I let them ride out the season? Should I trade them for whatever assets I possibly can? As we take a look at the standings here, you will see we are not in the tops here. So, we are not a very high playoff chance team, really. But we do have a chance to make the playoffs as the nine seed right now in the Eastern Conference. So that means we can get there. The problem is that we're going to be a low seed. We're going to be on the road in the playoffs. We're not going to be as good as the team we're playing in the playoffs. It doesn't mean a lot in hockey because the puck can bounce any which way, as you see. But we're just not that good of a team. So should we take the assets for these guys let me know in the comment section below should we try and trade those two players should we keep one of them trade the other should we keep both of them should we try to extend one of them it's a lot of money for a 30 year old that's the only reason i'm asking the question this is your chance to really take a little bit of control as to what happens and which direction the storyline goes in this franchise. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to drop a like as well as subscribe if you are new to the channel. There's plenty more of this franchise as well as three other franchises on the channel. So check them all out. Franchise content all day every day here on Franchise Gaming. Take care guys. You're a pretty little star boy.